quite separately. I'm Giles Brandreth, the older one, and just in case you didn't realize, this is Bennett Brandreth, my son. Well, certainly my wife's son. I'm just hoping he's my son. You may well wonder <laughs> why I am here at my age, trying to earn a living still. It's because I've discovered over the years I need the money. Money is the one thing keeping me in touch with my son. Mm. Yeah. So that's why I'm here. Yeah. We haven't been up. We haven't been up this early since the festival began. Uh, so we're a little bit sort of crazy this morning, but it's exciting to be with you. This is the most amazing festival in the world. Three thousand shows in three hundred venues, and families do come. And Bennett is here. And I think next week, do your children yes, arrive? Yes, I'm bringing my children, seven and five, because there are so many things for the children to do here. I uh, mean, there are shows for children of all kinds: circus, singing, yes. dancing. Well, and of course, and, the big and he thing does is a hilarious storytelling. Hilarious. Well, I yes. hope he is hilarious. It's the comedy the festival. Yeah, yes. he, oh, he is. He is hilarious. Actually, we're both funny in different ways. <laughs> and at different times of the day, you get him at 11.15 in the morning and my show's at 4.30 okay. so that my audience can catch You're it You're very good naps. at plugging. But I, my, one of my best friends is up there at the moment um, showing as well. I know the big thing is who gets bums on seats and you can get some very small venues and very quirky yeah. places. Who's getting the bigger crowds, mm. father or son? Mm. Uh, well, undoubtedly, my father is getting the bigger crowd, but then he is uh, perfection personified. You can't get any better than him. But he's getting the quality crowd, can yes. I tell you, with his sophisticated <laughs> show. They are coming to him and queuing around the block. They're not quite here yet, because it isn't 11.15. Yesterday, my show happily is selling out at the moment. Oh. The Prime Minister was in Edinburgh and wanted to come to my show because she'd heard it was a Brexit-free zone. Because not all, some of the shows are a bit political. Some of them are just a little bit, you know, funny, funny. I mean, Boris Johnson is mentioned in Bennett's show. Oh. Not in a good way. But not in mine, <laughs> I assure you. So we, well, we have fun here. And the, the joy of it is there is something for everybody here. So yeah. if you haven't been, it should be on your bucket list. So come and see your best friend. OK, gosh, you two sound so alike. It's really, really weird listening to you both. Uh, actually, you mentioned Boris Johnson there. And we in the midst the of all person. this debate, mm -hmm. um, I just wondered, it, it, comedy traditionally has been used to tackle big issues in a sort of fun-poking way. Is, there, is that something you would ever tackle, or is yours just bants and giggles? Well, I mean, uh, yes, comedy can be used to, to touch on sensitive topics and to deal with them sensitively. The question is whether or not that's been done on this occasion, but uh, certainly I don't think one should shy away from any topic. Some things have to be dealt with. Bennett's show is razor sharp, on the money, very topical. <laughs> Mine is a bit more nostalgic. It's a bit more of a family show, but we do get some cheeky moments. Yes. Donald so... Trump actually gets in because I think it's so amazing, the phenomenon of Donald Trump. So... The very fact that Woody Woodpecker and Donald Duck had a love child is extraordinary <laughs> enough to me. So, Giles, did the Prime Minister give you a visit then? Did she come to the show? She, now, this is, this is, I'm afraid, the truth. I was sold out, and the theatre is packed, 350 you people. You cannot get anybody Prime else Minister? in. And I really wish she came, because she would have loved it, because literally, at the end of the show, we do the whole show, and I then say to the audience, you know, we've got through an hour without mentioning or thinking about Brexit once, and the roof goes up. They have oh, had Theresa enough May. of it. She's if you want your audience figures to lift people, shows. drop Brexit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, come on to end very quickly. Give us your quickest singing. and shortest joke each. Uh, I have a story about a grammatically correct owl who used to say to wit, to whom? Ooh! Yeah, and I tell them, when good. I was young, I once played Hamlet. I played the part of Hamlet. Seriously, when I was a young actor, I played Hamlet, but not successfully. The audience threw eggs at me, went on as Hamlet, came off as omelette. Oh! I think Giles won it there. I'm so sorry, know. Bennett. I don't know. For our producer, <laughs> it was all about Bennett, because he was quicker. Uh, it's a pedant's love, Bennett. <laughs> one, boy. Congratulations very, very to Bennett. Very, very well, yeah. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy your Edinburgh experiences. And uh, come on, Bennett, you've got to start we selling will. out, otherwise you're never going to hear the end of it. Well, at least the Prime Minister can go to Bennett. I can't believe that. She's got all the problems of Brexit, she's got Boris Johnson, and she can't even get into Turned a comedy away. show for a giggle. Turned away.